Welcome everybody. In this lesson, let's introduce the template syntax for events and explain how events work under the hood in Angular by introducing the notion of zones. So let's get going. Let's start with something rather intriguing. Let's just create a simple example of an input box and using a reference, we are going to output in the template the value of the input box right next to the template, so input.value. Now, try to guess what will happen when we refresh the browser and we start typing in that box. What do you think it will happen? So, let's try it. We start typing and nothing happens, okay? So, the view is not being kept updated with the value of the input. What's going on here? More on this later. Right now, let's just add a button with the normal template syntax. So we create a click handler for the click event, as simple as that. And inside we are just going to show a plain uh, JavaScript pop-up to the user. Let's type again in, in this box to change the message and we now trigger the pop-up. Take a look, when we close the pop-up, the message was updated. So how can it be? What's going on here? In order to find out, let's add a debugger statement to try to find when exactly the message is being updated. So now we refresh the browser and we reproduce the same situation. So let's just edit the message, trigger the pop-up again. And by the way, the source maps for the examples are working. Take a look, the pop-up is hit, the breakpoint is hit. And take a look at this moment, the message has not yet been updated. So what's going on here? Let's release the breakpoint. If we release the breakpoint, we can see that the message is now updated. So conclusion, somehow the message is being updated immediately after our click handler finishes its execution and before the control is yielded back to the browser. Let's think about it for a second together. What's going on here? We can see here that we are at the end of our click handler. So the control will be yielded back to the browser in a moment, once we release the breakpoint. But somehow, Angular found a way to update the view between this moment and the moment that the browser has again a control. How can it be? Because there is no code after this point. How does this work? The view gets updated after these uh, occurrences. A DOM event, an AJAX callback, set timeout gets triggered, set interval all the same, a WebSocket callback is called, an alert like we saw or a prompt, and other after other browser async APIs are called. How can that be? This is all made possible by a library called zones or zone.js which allows to install custom browser functionality at the startup of your application. It allows to patch uh, browser APIs like add event listener, set timeout and add your own functionality. So the way that this works is there's a browser add event listener, the standard native uh, browser add event listener. At startup time, we're going to keep a reference to it and then we're going to override it because in JavaScript, everything is overridable by design in the runtime environment. So we're going to replace add event listener with our own Angular specific version that will call the original add event listener and it will trigger any callback that we pass to it in the same event, of course. But after the callback is executed, we are going to execute some Angular specific functionality. And what we are going to do is we are going to run change detection. And if something changed, we are going to update the view. Now, this is not the exact code that gets uh, executed. It's just uh, for explanatory purposes. But this explains what was going on with our example. Let's go back to our example. Now we can understand much better what was going on here. Initially, we only had the input and the message. There was nothing that could have triggered the change detection mechanism of Angular. There was no event handler. There was no Ajax callback. There was no trigger. 
Once we added the button, we had a trigger for the change detection mechanism, so that's why the message was being updated at that moment. Let's now see how we can use events, properties and references together with other mechanisms to create Angular 2 components.